Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So I guess we're to part four of that. <laughs> this, this is going on a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, quick recap, if this is the first one you're tuning into, we are doing a quick question and answer from Twitter um, for those who can't normally make a live stream is what this boils down to. Okay, question. What steps could be taken to rehabilitate news media perception among all Americans? Follow-up questions. How dangerous should we regard sources like two that I'm totally not going to name and give air to, <laughs> um, to the public trust? Um, okay, so what steps can be taken to rehabilitate the news media's perception among all Americans? I think the first thing that they would need to do would be uh, start being less inflammatory, less biased. Um, and it doesn't matter which outlet you're talking about. It's, it's a matter of the fact that they all are. And this channel, I'm biased. I have biases. Everybody does. The difference is I'm, I'm pretty open about mine. <laughs> um, when they tend to present themselves as, as trusted and that they are factual and accurate, we report, you decide type of thing, um, it when they try to pass that off as objective, it becomes a problem, especially when their bias is very transparent. They would have to become more balanced. They'd have to live up to their marketing. It's okay to have somebody who's a right winger, as long as you also have somebody who's a left winger. Um, when you're talking about discussing events, there was a time when Reuters was the standard. Who, what, when, where, why? And the why is always at the end, and any speculation is marked as speculation. I think that would be a big one. And then going back to just the, the normal standard practices of journalism, like marking your stock footage, your file footage, as file, rather than trying to make it seem like you have somebody there filming it right now. Little stuff like that would go a long way. As far as those other outlets, I... Uh, I don't know that I would use the term dangerous. Um, they're only dangerous if they're not countered. They're only dangerous if people aren't aware of what they are. Um, you know, one of these that you've named is actually a frequent advertiser on this channel, and I love it. I love the fact that they fund my channel, <laughs> um, denying them those resources. It, there has to be a counter to it. There has to be a counter to it. And if there is a counter to it, then it's not dangerous. If there's not, it runs amok, it, it does become dangerous. So I would not suggest, when you're talking about really inflammatory outlets, I, I do believe that mocking them is actually the right move. Even though I normally, normally think engaging is the right thing to do. Um, with them, no. There's no engaging that, that type of rhetoric, those that push those kind of theories. Mock them, debunk them, move on. Let's see. What are your thoughts about how everything going on is affecting in the agricultural world? Commodities have crashed in February, and with restaurants all closed, the surplus is likely to be immense. What kind of actions should the Fed be taking to protect American against producers. I'm going to assume that's a typo. Um, American agricultural producers. I, I actually don't think there's much they need to do. I know that's counterintuitive. There's going to be uh, a surplus here. There's going to be a surplus everywhere. So it's going to be cheap. I don't think there's going to be a lot of foreign competition. I don't think people are going to want to import here because they're not going to get much for it. Um, I don't foresee that being a huge issue because I think the bigger issue is that surplus is going to be huge um, because we eat out a lot and we're not doing that right now. And that I think that I think farmers are in for a rough time. I think farmers are in for a rough time and they're, they're probably going to need a bailout or it's just going to all become big agriculture. They're going to buy up everything. That, that those are the two things that are going to happen. One of those. There's either going to be a bailout or it's all going to be corporate owned. 
Um, should the United States adopt a parliamentary system? Ah, there, there's a whole bunch of different remedies. Um, that's one, sure. Uh, <laughs> I like the idea of getting rid of parties altogether <laughs> more than anything. Um, but again, my views on where we're headed are pretty extreme. <laughs> They're pretty radical on that. So the stepping stones to get there are just that to me. They're stepping stones. I don't think they're fixes. Um, please explain the whole fifth column thing. Okay, so the fifth column, there's a story. Um, and it's it, basically there's a general. He has a city surrounded. And he's like, I have four columns, north, south, east, and west. I also have a fifth column inside the city ready to open the gates and forces the city to surrender. A rough version of the story. The name of the fifth column came from a news outlet, <laughs> um, which is still just kind of just on hiatus right now. Um, but the idea behind it was to help profile more independent voices you know, there's a lot in the major news networks. It, there's a lot of gatekeeping going on. The Fifth Column, a news outlet designed to open those gates and let more people um, have a voice in the media. That was the general idea behind it. I know people, <laughs> people read a lot into that. Um, is it even truly possible that we the people can ever have a fair representative body of electives that's not owned by the big corps? Possible? Sure. Probable? No. Um, people are corruptible. And large corporations have money. Um, representative government is good, um, but it's not perfect. Of your immigration videos, anything to do with it would be great, especially the, the new order Trump's putting in place. How could he be held accountable? I don't know that Trump would ever be held accountable for his actions, realistically. Um, I, I think that the powers that be, the establishment figures, when they get back um, the Oval Office and they get it out of the hands of this guy, they're going to want to forget about this as soon as possible. Um, I don't see... They're going to be working on mending the image of the United States. And I think that any public accountability of Trump might undermine that in their eyes. I think it's necessary, but I don't know that they will. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm interested to see. In the absence of a coherent federal response, is there value in participation via platforms like this? Hang on, because I don't know what this is. Um, a symptom tracker. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I'm all about decentralization when it comes to everything. <laughs> so the more information in the more hands, the better. Um, you know, a lot of the big breakthroughs have not been coming through government auspices. They've been coming through people working together. So I, I, I definitely, I don't know anything about that particular or, or that particular app, but yeah. I mean, the, one of the things I use is actually a thermometer, like a uh, Internet of Things. It's tied to the web. And one of the things I use to track it is actually the readings from these thermometers. Um, so that kind of information is useful. Um, okay. I'm interested in your take on free market capitalism versus cronyism. The former is often referred to in place of the latter. I've been guilty of it myself. <laughs> Free market capitalism can only exist without a government. <laughs> um, it, that, that's, that's the reality of it. As soon as the government comes to play, come into play, there's corruption, there's cronyism, it happens. And if under free market capitalism without a government, you're going to very quickly have a de facto government. Um, those with the money make the rules. So... Uh, yeah, I, I don't see a whole lot of difference. I know people like to draw that that difference. I don't know that it's as significant as a lot of people make it um, at the end of the day. Okay, so here we are again, 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead and stop and come right back. Man, I 
not think there were going to be this many questions. 